Hey folks, we got some big doings going on here in town, and uh, we're going to enter a contest. So stick around, we'll take you along with us. So here in our local town, they have a pie contest every year out at the uh, Sand, Hills, uh, Sand Hills Journey Visitor Center, which is right outside of town. And this year it's kind of special. They built a replica sod house, um, like the ones that everybody used to live out here in Nebraska. All the houses were made out of sod. They called them soddies. And they recently, this year, built one out there for everybody to visit. And uh, we'll actually show you that when we go out there this afternoon. But they're going to have a pie contest. And I think the pie contest goes on every year. And if you win, you get your name on a plaque down at the visitor center. So we're going to enter that. We're going to make some pies. Kelly's going to make one. I'm going to make one. And we'll see how we do. So let's go. So the pie I'm going to submit is going to be a triple berry cream cheese pie. So first thing we need to do is we need to make our famous pie crust. We've already run you through all of that. It's in the playlist. But we are going to whip that out. We'll bring you back when we got those ready to go. Now when Kelly makes our pie crust, she replaces the shortening with cold coconut oil which hardens when it's cold. And we can't let her have that unfair advantage, so I'm going to use coconut oil today in my pie crust. All right, we got our uh, pie pastry done. It's in the fridge. I took lots of extra care when making this. I made sure everything was just perfect. Took a lot of time to do it. So I'm banking on that there's not going to be a lot of uh, scratch-made pie crust there today. And I would also venture to say there's probably going to be some store-bought pies there today because that always happens. So, but this is Mark Kelly Farms, so we got to represent. We're making homemade scratch pie crust with uh, Kelly's special little kick to it. And then our filling's going to just steal the show too. All our pie is in the pie crust is in the fridge. We're going to start on our filling. This is the cream cheese portion. You're going to use an 8 ounce block of cream cheese, 3 tablespoons of lemon juice, fresh is best, and a cup and a half of confectioner sugar. And you're going to blend that up really well. Our cream cheese mixture is mixed. Make sure your cream cheese is at room temp, otherwise it won't mix and it'll be really extra lumpy. You see we got a few little tiny lumps in there, but the pie is going to cook in the oven, so that's not going to be... Uh, anything we have to worry about. So let's get going with the berries. For our berries, we're using the triple berry blend. It's uh, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. And we need three cups of that to start. To our three cups of berries, we added a half a cup of regular granulated sugar. And then most recipes will call for some cornstarch to be put in here. But my secret to a good fruit pie that sets really well is this stuff right here. So add this one for one. If it calls for two tablespoons of cornstarch, put two tablespoons of your minute tapioca and your pie will set up perfectly every time. There won't be running out all over your pie pan. Now another secret to a really good tasting berry filling is a little bit of cinnamon. If you were doing a, a whole berry pie, obviously, this would be a bigger recipe of berries. Uh, we have the cream cheese, so we don't need as much berry filling. So in a normal pie, you would put about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. In this one, we're only doing a quarter teaspoon. Got our berry mix thoroughly incorporated with sugar and everything. Now, while our pie crust sits in the fridge, this is going to kind of thaw out a little bit. You don't want to go with crazy frozen strawberries in your pie because we don't want our pie to have to cook too long to get our filling to set. You want your filling to uh, bubble 
to kind of boil in the pie. If your pie is not bubbling uh, when it comes out of the oven, the chances are your filling may not set. Uh, so the colder the filling is, the longer it's going to have to bake to bubble. So closer to room temperature as you can is the best way to go. Okay, our pastry has uh, uh, rested for a while. We're going to take our pastry cutter. We're going to cut this directly in half. We'll put half of it back in the fridge and we'll roll out our bottom crust. Now the rules for the pie competition call for set or eight inch pies in a disposable tin. It's hard to cook a good pie crust in a disposable tin, but we got to do what we got to do. And we'd always rather do a nine inch pie, but oh well, got to follow the rules. So as you get going, you also want to preheat your oven 425. You see we've got some dollops of our cream cheese filling in here. I don't like to spread it all over the bottom. I like some of the berries to get down in between. So now we're going to add our berries. Got our berries in our pie. We uh, also dotted it with one tablespoon of butter. Now we're going to roll out our top crust. We'll get it out of the fridge. We'll trim our top crust just a little larger than what we have here on the bottom crust. We'll wet this crust with some water and then we'll roll the top crust around and then we'll seal it all the way around. And then we're going to cut some slits in the top to vent the pie and then we'll get her in the oven. And when you start rolling your dough, flour your surface and then do yourself a favor. Start you a good disc just with your hand pressing it down before you get the rolling action out. If you start with a ball of dough, it's more likely going to crack on you when you roll it. So we'll dust this a little bit on top. We'll dust our rolling pin. We'll get this rolled out. There's our top crust on. We've got it rolled under. Now we cut air vents in the top. When you're cutting your air vents, take your knife and push it apart a little bit to gap it open. Otherwise it wants to stay closed. You want to make sure the air can come out. So now we're going to wrap the outer edge of this pie so the crust out here doesn't burn. So to make this happen, get a square of foil, whatever size your foil is, cut it off to where it's square. And then we're going to start folding this corner to corner, triangular. We'll show you. So we folded it five times, corner to corner. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here on our pie, figure out where the center is. We're going to cut it twice. We're going to cut it about here and we'll cut it across about here and then we unfold that that'll leave us a perfect strip all the way around. Okay there's our cover in the oven we go. Now center rack in your oven for 45 to 55 minutes. The reason we go center uh, direct center of the oven so we don't have to spin the pie because if the pie gets closer to one wall than the other say when you're baking two pies the edge against the wall is going to get a lot done quicker and browner because it's hotter against the wall. So if you're doing two pies, you need to rotate those pies about halfway through. All right, here's our two pies. So we're going to go to town. This is my uh, triple berry cream cheese pie here. And this is Kelly's mile high apple pie. We'll get it delivered. All right, we got our pies turned in. This is the pie table. Lots of pies. <laughs> Might be eating humble pie today. Here's some of the displays here at the visitor center. Lots of old pictures and stuff and information. Barbed wire collection, pretty extensive. Most uh, extensive barbed wire collection I've ever seen. Got a big mural in the corner of the train. Big train area here. Got like a diagram of the old sod houses here. And I'll take you a look at the uh, the new sod house out there. It's a little windy. Now this barn was originally at another location. And they moved it here. You can see them coming through downtown right there with the barn. And then this is what it looks like now at its current location where we're at. Apparently they did that in 2009. 
Now we're upstairs. It still has the old wooden decking up here. Pretty neat. But uh, lots of displays up here. Take a look at the window at the, the Saudi out there. They just built that. Love this old barn. Look at these old rafters. Pretty quality construction there. That's neat design. How they make the curve. The, uh, the bottom cord of the rafter is straight and they use blocks and then they bend the top cord to get the curve. Remember they used to have the old brand book downstairs where you could look up all the old brands by name. You could figure out who had what brand for their cattle. Old sewing machine and quilts. These are called barn quilts. I guess just like regular quilts, all of the uh, barn quilts have a name on their design. This is a Texas star, and this is called flying geese, I, I guess. Got some old hand-stitched quilts on display here. Some of these are embroidered. It takes lots of hours. Sad thing is when you go to auctions and estate sales, um, there's so many old quilts that had so much work put into them and they go for pennies on the dollar. Sometimes probably they just go to, to waste. You've got a little outdoor pavilion out here and a little pond. Used to have some old tractors out here along this edge of the driveway, but they've all been taken somewhere else, I guess. Got a little gravel driveway out here to the Saudi. Let's go check it out. Here's a little sign letting everybody know that the sand hills were uh, derived out of the Western Interior Seaway, covering three quarters of Nebraska here, when all this used to be ocean. Apologize about the wind. They have a working windmill out here. This is what feeds the pond, the overflow here. You can see the, uh, the up and down of the pump jack here. Looks like the guide has broke off. It's just going up and down with the, the rod. They have it dumping there into that and down the pipe. All the way from up there. A nice example of an old buckboard wagon that the pioneers would have uh, pulled with a team of horses back in the day with all their belongings in them. Going out to uh, score some land out in the Midwest back when the Kincaders were out here. They would uh, have like a giant raffle for parcels of land. You can see this sod house is made of sod, uh, including the weeds. On uh, wet times of the year, these weeds would probably grow out here on the exterior. And then they use wood framing. To do your windows and such, let's see if the door opens. Yep. Oop, somebody's in here. Yeah, come on in. So this is what the old sod houses would look like. Dirt floor, of course. Yeah. Some of them would be upgraded to a wood floor. Yeah, I was frying some, frying some bacon and... Fixing up some greens and some bacon on some plates there. All right. <laughs> Your chimney doesn't go out though. Well. That would be a little hard to. It, we just. Hard to keep sealed up with the rain yeah, and all that. We just put it on there. 
we've got the collar and stuff, you know, to put it on up. But oh, okay. We haven't had time to do much. You can see the live edge timbers and stuff up in the roof. And then a plank roof was sawed on top of the plank. Yeah. This uh, beam here was in an old sod house in the 1800s. Oh, so it's got history. Yeah, it, that one's got history. The ridge beam? Yeah, that big one up there. Awesome. That was in a sod house. But this is how know. people lived back in the day yeah. here in Nebraska. Yeah. And I imagine it's great insulation, all this yeah. so, all this sod. Yeah, it, well... You it's actually it's, pretty cool in here right now. Yeah, it's pretty and calm. Yep. Get out of the weather. Yeah. Here's the washing machine over here. Yeah, I was going to put some water in it, but it's so cold. Had a yeah. agitator. You just go mm -hmm. up and down. Yep. And then you'd use that for bath once a week. And wash your dishes in it or whatever. You, yep. You know. It was always a chore to get water because you had to walk for it or whatever. So well, yeah, water did not get wasted. Yeah, we got a, That's where the term, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Yep. Windmill running out there. I imagine not everybody back in the day had a windmill. They had to walk to the creek. Yeah. Walk to the creek or something. You know? But I've always heard that back in the day when everybody was taking baths, it would start with the father and then work its way on down by age, yeah. and the baby got yeah. the bath last. And that's grandma, grandma. that's why they say don't when throw I the baby out grandma, with the bath water. <laughs> they um, they'd all take baths, and then I'd get the last of the, you know. Yep. I'd be the one that got the tail end of the pretty neat cloudy water. <laughs> well, thanks for the tour. Yep, you're sure welcome. Here on the outside of the house, they have the dirt built up against the wall, so it sheds the water away from the wall. And then on the high side, you have a berm to run the water coming downhill, so it doesn't sub in underneath the house and kind of hurt your foundation, make your floor wet and all that. And then you have an exterior post out here to hold your ridge pole up. These walls are three feet thick. So crazy good insulation in these. You see the sod on the roof up there, that'll actually grow when the weather is conducive to that. You'll have like grass up on your roof. That'll help soak up the water and stuff too and hold everything together. Kind of like erosion control. See, they built kind of a, a wood shed out here on the outside of the body. This board here is solid board all the way across, like 24 inches. 20 inches. 20 inches. You don't find boards that long anymore. And then here on the inside, they got an example of what they would collect. A lot of times you would go out and get the dry cow pies and you would burn those. You could burn them in your fireplace or even your stove. And then a lot of people back in the day burned corn cobs. After they would shell their corn, they would save all the corn cobs and burn those in the stove as well. Well, let's taste the water. Pretty good. They got a display out here outside of all the native plants in Nebraska. The insects, amphibian and reptiles and threatened and endangered species. I'm not too uh, broke up about that being endangered. I'll show you an outside view of the barn here while we've got a little cover from the crazy wind out here. More pictures of the barn being moved through town. See the stoplights, they had to jockey their way through there. They've also got uh, all the info of everything to do around here. Places only open during the summer, closes during the winter. All right, we got the pies dropped off. Hope you enjoyed the little tour. Uh, the only my only concern is I should have cooked my pie last night because they covered them all with saran wrap and my pie's still warm.
So that's going to take all the crispiness out of my handmade crust. So that's unfortunate. But uh, it's for a good cause. After the pie judging, uh, everybody that comes down for the ribbon cutting at the sod house, uh, they'll be served all that pie that's in there for just a, a goodwill donation. And uh, it's a good cause. Uh, I'm so glad they built that sod house uh, replica out there. That's going to be a really neat thing for people to see that come through. Parking lot is filling up here. People are starting to come in. Some of those pies on the table were still in the box they were purchased in. Uh, I'm sure they were handmade, but uh, the people that brought them didn't make them. But uh, I didn't eat lunch today, so I heard that Runza has their chili back. They only have that during the winter. They start in fall and they end in spring. I don't know why they don't have the chili all year, because I love it. But they bring in chili and cinnamon rolls during that time. Some people eat their cinnamon rolls with the chili. They dip it in there. But uh, I'm not a fan. But I am going to go get some of that chili, because I'm hungry and I need something to hold me over till dinner. One of the more peculiar things about uh, our area here, there's people that are 100 years old that are still driving their vehicle. And you wouldn't know they're 100 years old by looking at them. But you can definitely tell how they park. I'm in heaven. All right, folks, we are headed home. We had uh, got back to the place when they said the judging was going to take place. And it had already been done. <laughs> they did it earlier than what they had announced. But uh, there was a very good turnout. We wanted to, to film the results for you. But unfortunately, uh, it happened. <laughs> uh, the same lady that won last year won this year with a strawberry rhubarb pie. I found it kind of peculiar when I walked by the judging table where they had each a piece out of every pie with the number on it. There was only about six pies that even had a bite out of them. So uh, found it looked like it was kind of subjective to me. The judge only tried pies that she liked or he liked or whatever. But that's all right. I was a little disappointed in my crust because it lost kind of all definition when it cooked. But I did have a piece of mine and Kelly's pie both. The texture was spot on even though the crust... Uh, didn't look appealing it was incredibly flaky and the fillings were really good now I did see one lady eating a piece of the my berry pie and her eyes kind of rolled back in her head and she looked at her husband and said oh my god you got to try this one so that's all I need as long as somebody liked it that's fine it was for a good cause they had a great turnout there for the um, opening ribbon cutting for the sod house so that was good that's the important thing so Hope you enjoyed our little pie shenanigans. I wish it would have came out better for you uh, as far as being able to see the judging and all that. But what can you do? So till next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us here at Mark Kelly Farm.